GCSE students can often find the topic of electricity quite a tricky one. So this is going to tell you everything you need to know to prepare for GCSE Physics Paper 1. So we're going to start off with the basics. You need to know all these different circuit symbols. There are trickier ones towards the end. We're going to cover what they do, but we should be familiar with switches, open and closed, um, and the rest of them down the left-hand side. So what we're going to look at first is these two ones at the top right here, voltmeters and ammeters. Now a voltmeter will measure potential difference in a circuit. So potential difference or PD is exactly the same thing as voltage, but exam questions will use the word potential difference, so make sure you're familiar with it. Now the definition for potential difference is the work done per unit charge. Now we can know this definition by looking at an equation. One of the equations on your equation sheet is E, energy transferred in joules or work done, equals potential difference in volts times by charge in coulombs. If I rearrange this a little bit, I've got V equals E over Q, which is work done or energy transferred divided by charge. An ammeter will measure current. No, it doesn't measure amps, it measures current. Amps is the unit. This is defined as the rate of flow of charge in a circuit. Now again, we've got an equation that goes with it. The equation is Q charge in coulombs equals current in amps times by time in seconds. If I rearrange this for I, the current, I will find that it equals to charge divided by time, which is the same thing as saying rate of flow of charge. Don't forget rate just means per second. Now inside a circuit, for any current to flow, there must be a potential difference. So for these electrons here in orange to go through a wire, there must be a um, positive charge sort of attracting them through the wire um, for them to be able to flow, otherwise they're not going to go anywhere. Now as these electrons go through the wire, they can encounter some resistance. Now what resistance is in a wire it can be caused by numerous different things, sometimes it's the material, sometimes it's the temperature, but a higher resistance means a greater opposition uh, to the flow of current. So if there's a higher resistance, that means there's a lower current. The technical relationship between the two is to say they are inversely proportional. If one doubled, the other would half. Now, for certain components, they follow something called Ohm's law, which is to say that potential difference is directly proportional to the current flowing, assuming all conditions like temperature are constant. If I was to plot a voltage current graph of them, I'd find that it's a straight line through the origin, and if I was to find the gradient of that graph, that would tell me the resistance. The equation says that potential difference in volts is equal to the current in amps times by resistance, which is measured in ohms, and this applies for something that follows Ohm's law, or an ohmic conductor. To practically investigate these characteristics of how voltage or potential difference and current vary, we need to construct a circuit a bit like this. Now this is part of the required practical VI characteristics or current voltage characteristics, which I've made a separate video about. But in this circuit, we'll go through the basics. We've got an ammeter and a voltmeter to measure the current and the PD. We've also got a variable resistor. Now, as the name suggests, this is going to be able to change the resistance in the circuit, but that, that also changes the current, which is one of the things we're measuring, and it will also change the PD. We need to know for three different components what the current voltage or current PD graphs look like. Now, to be able to do this, we need to find out also what their negative readings look like. So to find that out, all we do is just reverse or flip over the cell to obtain negative readings. So the first component is the resistor, which we've already looked at. Um, that's going to follow Ohm's law, so be directly proportional PD and current will be a straight line through the origin. The next component we're going to use is a filament lamp. Now, a filament lamp is one of these old school type um, lamps or bulbs, as you see in the picture here, not a new LED one. Now, the curve um, for this graph looks a bit like this. So initially, it's going quite, uh, current is increasing at a very slow rate, then it increases quite a fast rate, and then goes to a slow rate again. So the explanation for this is all due to what happens when you increase the potential difference across a filament bulb. So as you increase the potential difference, um, the temperature increases. These types of old types of bulbs get really hot quite quickly. When that happens, that increases the resistance in the filament. This is due to the ions, so there's positive charges left behind, are vibrating more, so it's harder for electrons to get through. As this happens, the current stops increasing. Note the current doesn't go down, and the curve just sorts to flatten out a bit, and it stops increasing. The third component we're going to look at is the diode, which this would also apply for a light emitting diode because it's just a type of diode. If I'm to plot the graph here, a very weird thing happens. In one direction, the current is zero, totally zeroed the whole time. However, if I reverse the cell, we'll notice after a certain voltage, the current increases by quite some amount. 
Now this tells us what a diode does. A diode allows current to flow in one direction only. It's just like a valve in the heart. The reason for this is because it has a really high resistance in the opposite direction. So they're designed to, for current to flow in just that one direction. And the direction is important here as well. The way I've drawn it in the circuit is correct. That we draw a diode um, with the play button, the triangle pointing in the direction that conventional current is flowing. So going from positive to negative. So if you follow the positive um, symbol on the cell, it's going in this case around down, passed through towards the right of the diode and not the other way. The last two components we're going to look at are the thermistor and the light dependent resistor. So in a thermistor, um, when you increase the temperature across it, normally in a wire, the um, temperature increases, the resistance increases, as we just discussed. However, in a thermistor, the temperature goes up. That means the resistance actually goes down, made out of a material that has a reduced resistance with more temperature, meaning current I can increase. Now this is useful in thermostats, like in thermostats in your home, to detect a change in temperature um, and change a circuit accordingly. A light dependent resistor or LDR is very similar, but this time it responds to change in light. So an increase in light would mean the resistance goes down, and the same thing happens, current would increase. This is used in street lights, which um, respond to a change in light level um, in the evening to be able to switch on. There are two types of circuits, series and parallel circuits. In a series circuit, the current follows one path and the circuit looks like one big loop with components in series, one after the other. In a parallel circuit, you can add a path in parallel with each other, meaning the electrons can take multiple paths around the circuit and you have several loops. It doesn't have to be two, it could be three, four, five, whatever really. We need to know how the current and PD vary depending on what circuit we're using. So for a series circuit, if I was to put an ammeter at different points throughout the circuit, current does not get used up, so the current is the same at any point. If I was to do the same thing with a parallel circuit and have ammeters at the start and on each branch, what we'd notice is that there is more current nearer the battery and there is less on each branch. So this shows us that current is shared between the paths or between the branches. If I was to have two amps going in initially, then I'd have one amp shared, um, assuming the resistances of the bulb are equal. Let's look at potential difference. In a series circuit, this is shared between components, meaning if I use three volts of six volts up at one bulb, I'm gonna have three volts left for another bulb. They don't have to be equal, in this case there are. A potential difference in a parallel circuit um, is the same across each path. So the reason for this, if it's 6 volts at the battery, each electron gains 6 volts. As the electrons go around the circuit, they either travel through the first path, so the middle path here, or they travel through the bottom path. None of them travel through both, so they give up 6 volts um, of energy per unit charge to their component and then go back to the battery. There's one big advantage of parallel circuits over series circuits. In a parallel circuit, if one of the bulb breaks, that means that you've got another bulb that can still be lit because the electrons can still reach that bulb. If one component breaks in a series circuit, because they're all in series, there is no current that flows and the circuit is broken. Now resistance, understanding resistance in series and parallel circuits can be quite tricky. In a series circuit, you just add the resistances together. So in this case, I'd have five ohms plus 15 ohms would be 20 ohms. In a parallel circuit, it's a bit different. You can't be asked to calculate it because that's A-level physics content, but the rule is that the total resistance is always lower than the value of the lowest resistor. So let me explain what I mean. If I've got the, the top loop of the circuit intact with just my 5 ohm resistor, by adding an additional branch, I'm actually increasing the current that can flow in the circuit because there are more paths for the electrons to take. If you increase current ever, that means you are decreasing the resistance. So adding more resistors in parallel actually decreases the resistance. And in this case, all we'd know is that it would be lower than five ohms. Plugs in the UK look a bit like this. We've got three different wires and a fuse. So the brown wire is known as the live wire. The blue wire is known as the neutral wire and yellow and green indicates that it's an earth wire. The way to remember which way around the wires go um, is that brown has got an R in it, so that's always on the right. Blue has got an L in it, that's always on the left. And then the earth wire is the one in the middle.
So what happens between a live wire and a neutral wire is that the live wire has a potential difference flowing through it of 230 volts. Neutral wire has zero potential difference. So there's a potential difference between those two different wires of 230, which is what drives the current to flow to power appliances in your homes. The purpose of the earth wire is to carry any dangerous charge to the ground to prevent electrocution. This would only happen if the live wire accidentally touches the metal case of an appliance. If it's a plastic appliance, the earth wire is pretty redundant, not needed here. Another safety feature is a fuse. So a fuse contains a fuse wire which melts when the current gets too high and this breaks the circuit altogether so therefore meaning the fuses will not get too high. In the UK that potential difference value is constant for all plugs and all appliances are designed to run from 230 volts. Now the frequency that is provided by the mains electricity is 50 hertz meaning the direction changes 50 times every second. This happens because it uses something called alternating potential difference. Potential difference that's alternating means it changes polarity or reverses direction. Polarity just means going positive to negative or back. Direct potential difference doesn't change direction. And do be careful, in the AQA specification it does only talk about alternating PD, not alternating current. So I'll ask you about alternating PD. To get an electric shock, if one of these things doesn't work inside the plug, that means there has to be a very high potential difference between two objects. So that means that current or charged electrons can move between the two objects, causing um, the electric shock. Inside any electrical circuit, there is going to be some electrical power supplied by a battery or a cell. Now, the definition of power is the same as from the energy topic, which is the rate of flow of energy transferred. But we can also use it to calculate the energy supplied to a device. If we knew the power rating of the appliance, we multiplied that in watts by the time taken in seconds, we would find the energy supplied to the um, appliance in joules. So in this quick example here, if I've got two microwaves, one's operating at 800 watts, one's at 1000 watts, you put the same plate of food in each, which one is going to heat up the food first? So given that the energy needed to heat up each plate of food would be the same because they're identical, the one with the higher power rating would be able to heat it up in a lower time, so therefore it would be the 1000 watts power rated uh, microwave. To calculate electric power using the current and the voltage, we need to multiply them together. So power equals current times by PD. Now you can derive this from the power equals energy over time equation. It's just a different way of expressing, it's just a different way of calculating the power using current and PD. If we substitute into this equation, uh, the fact that voltage PD equals current times resistance, we could come up with a new expression and it's the last of the electrical equations, which is that power equals current squared times by resistance, resistance in ohms. And this is commonly known as the rate of energy lost through heating. Rate meaning per second, energy is just energy, so energy per second lost through heating you can often work out as multiplying I squared times by R. Now almost all electrical devices, appliances will lose energy due to heat at some point. This is due to the fact to make electrons flow through a wire, even if they're made of the lowest resistance material, um, even if it's really good high grade copper, there's always going to be heat loss due to friction created when electrons move through a wire, causing the ions in the lattice to vibrate, just like for the filament bulb, meaning heat is going to be given off. The last little bit of content for the electricity topic is only if you are doing triple physics or separate physics. So you don't need to know this if you're doing the combined science course. Now an example of this might be if you're bouncing on a trampoline or going down a slide um, that is made of plastic, um, rubbing two insulators together, electrons get transferred from one surface to another. Now when this happens, it is the electrons that move not positive charges. But when you take away electrons which are negatively charged, you are going to have a positive charge left behind. So another example of this would be if you rubbed a balloon on your head for a while, the balloon might gain a negative charges, your hair would have less negatives, meaning it's positively charged. If you have a negative and a positive charge together, they're going to attract. However, if you were to find that you had two like charges, like two positive charges, they would repel. Electrostatic force is a non-contact force and electric fields provide the non-contact force look a bit like this. Around a positive charge, the field lines are pointing away. Around a negative charge, they're pointing towards it. 
If you have a higher concentration of field lines, it means that the field is stronger. So in this case, the positive charge is stronger. Let's say it might be positive seven coulombs and the negative might be minus four coulombs. The stronger the field lines are close to the center of the charge um, because there are stronger, uh, more field lines. And that means if you move further away, the field strength decreases. And that's the end of the electricity topic. I hope you found that useful.